Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. The issue of passport backlog is back. Kenyans are experiencing serious delays. And that's very ironical because about two to three months ago, we saw Professor Kithure Kindiki storming Nyayo House where he promised to deal with the issue once and for all. The only assurance I want to give today is that the backlog will not be there in the next 10, 11 days. We'll have cleared it. He has been here for more than three times in the last few weeks in a bid to ensure that issuance of passport do not experience delays. His agenda too was to ensure that corruption cartels operating there are removed. Friday morning, he held a meeting on policy reforms and performance after promising that for 10 days, 40,000 passport certificate applications would be processed without fail. No citizen should spend more than 30 minutes for whatever service in this department. Haitakuwa tena ya kwamba mwananchi anatafuta cheti cha kusafiria na akipatikani kwa zaidi ya siku saba. He has also promised to purchase modern printing equipment and the employment of additional immigration officers to help resolve systemic challenges that have hampered provision of services in the department. I want to assure the country that services in Nyayo House are going on well. Right now we are producing about 3,600 passports per day and uh, I want to say the backlog which we had, which was about 100,000, has now been reduced to about uh, 45,000. And in the next two weeks, there will be no back, backlog of passports in, in your house. So I want to say there's a lot of work going on uh, with all arms of government, with the legislature, with the executive, to ensure that there's a proper cleanup of your house. There are four persons who are arrested in, uh, in, around your house who are suspected to be the ones who are uh, aiding corruption and other such practices. And the investigation now is under, underway through the DCI to ensure that uh, all persons who are culpable are taken to court and prosecuted for that matter. The government is on top of things as far as this is concerned. Uh, DCI has been properly briefed and we believe that the crackdown that is, on, is around your house will be extended to other, other towns or other cities like Mombasa, Kisumu, Kisi and many other areas where there are complaints from Kenyans that are not able to get services because there are people who have been, uh, who are suspected to be aiding corruption. We believe that uh, it is even possible to get a passport within three days. We are going to reduce services like express services to ensure that Kenyans are able to get passports on time and that uh, it is possible with the current arrangements which you have put in place, with the PPP arrangements which you have put in place, I want to assure the country that uh, in the next few months, you will no longer have to wait for your passport for a long time to get it. You will get it at record time, either three days or maximum within seven days. Why seven days? Is because there are vetting processes, security vetting that passports have to go through before you get it. That was a few months ago. We've seen Kithure Kindiki talking tough. We have even seen his PS in charge of immigration saying they had arrested some cartels who were causing that backlog. Months later, listen to this. The department is yet again faced with delays in processing passport applications three months after the Ministry of Interior pledged to deal with the passport mess once and for all. According to the sources, the breakdown of printing machines is yet again one of the reasons for ongoing delays coupled with shortage of essential printing materials, as Ben Kirui now reports. At the heart of the current dilemma in the recurrence of printing machine breakdowns and shortages in essential materials exacerbating an already problematic situation, Nyayo House, the NAV Center of the Immigration Department has reportedly witnessed a two-month break in passport printing, plunging applicants into an extended period of uncertainty and anxiety. Even uh, after the directive from the Cabinet Secretary for Interior, 
that passports will be out in two weeks. I have never received mine, so I have been waiting since June. In response to the technical glitches and insufficient printing booklets, the Immigration Department has resorted to fast-tracking emergency cases, particularly those requiring medical attention abroad, leaving other applicants such as those seeking passports for educational opportunities in limbo. This selective approach has raised concerns among the affected individuals who now grapple with the anticipation of a resolution to their travel document predicament. Since last month, I'm supposed to travel on 12th of December. So since last month, I haven't received any news about the passport. I then called like two weeks ago and the customer care who received my call said that uh, they don't have the booklets. So we'll have to wait for a little bit longer. Lengthy queues are no longer visible as was the case before. However, it is not because of efficiency. Sources within Nyayo House told Citizen TV that applicants are advised to await communication from immigration authorities or alternatively track the progress of the applications online without physically visiting Nyayo House. <laughs> A spot check by Citizen TV at Nyayo House and various immigration department stations nationwide unveiled queues predominantly composed of individuals undergoing biometric registration. Professor Kithure Kindiki said he would visit immigration offices until the passport's mess was resolved. I'll be here every other day until we work together with my colleagues to ensure that this is a good place. At that time, he attributed the delays to malfunctioning machines and printers, assuring the public that the situation would be rectified with the procurement of new equipment. However, as of now, it remains unclear whether these promised machines have arrived in the country. The notable absence of any public official communication or admission from government authorities regarding the breakdown of printing machines further adds to the ambiguity surrounding the current state of passport processing. What does all that mean politically? The first meaning... As long as the top is rotten, the tail will never be fresh, will never get it right. The problem Kenyans are experiencing at Nyayo House stems from the incompetence of the CEO, in this case, the president. A whole government cannot buy booklets, a printing machine, while the same government is wasting billions globe trotting, wasting billions buying bells and watches worth millions, wasting taxpayers' money creating unnecessary government positions the CASS, but the government cannot even buy a printing machine to print this passport booklets. The problem lies squarely at the top. Ruto is seriously incompetent. The second meaning, these cabinet secretaries and the PSS they are just being used for PR. In actual sense, they don't have any power at all. They cannot initiate any change because it's again coming out very clearly that all decisions are being made at State House. And I'm saying that because slightly about one week and some days, we saw some cabinet secretaries complaining that decisions were being made at State House. Decisions in their ministries were being made at State House without their involvement. So these cabinet secretaries, PSS, are just like flower girls. They cannot initiate any change at all. Another meaning, it might be possible that William Ruto appointed very corrupt individuals into these positions. 
And with what we saw, there was a lot of favoritism, ethnicity, and tribalism in the appointments of these government officials. So tribalism is also working to actually make the situation worse in that you go to a government office, all top managers or officials are from one tribe. They are seen as friends to the appointing authority. So it might be possible they are looking from public coffers with impunity and you can do nothing to them. Corruption is clearly aiding that. And I'm saying that based on also what Kithure Kindiki and his PS told us that some cartels who are aiding corruption were responsible for that backlog. So it appears that Kithure Kindiki and his team have surrendered to the cartels. The cartels are just too powerful. So it means that this government is deliberately sanctioning corruption in government offices. Yes. When the top is rotten, the tail will never get it right. This is a corrupt government and what we are seeing at the immigration department is because of corruption most definitely being abated at the top. Let me stop you there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. Listening to Kithure Kindiki months ago and listening to him now, you are seeing a man who was just lying to Kenyans. The usual PR games by Kenya Kwanza government. They got power through propaganda and they are still using that propaganda to sustain their rule. The best thing, therefore, this government should do is to resign because it's very clear nothing is working. Even printing of exams alone and almost everything is failing. Printing of exams, G2G, everything is failing. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya.